to five. So, um, you know, so I guess remember and, and join Brujo. Um, I've known Brujo for a really long time and he's awesome. And, um, uh, you know, I think, I think this will be fun. I'm going to, I'm going to um, log off in a second because I have another meeting, but Brujo, text me if you, if you need me for anything. Um, but I'm sure you'll be just fine because what could you possibly need me for at this point? <laughs> okay. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you, too. <laughs> okay. All right, well, so yeah, thank you everybody for joining this class. As I was saying before, I can uh, repeat what I said back and forth when more people arrive in. I will be management, uh, management this thing too from my computer, so I will give access to people who are joining. So um, we have so far, I think so like seven, eight participants, seven participants now. So um, as I was saying, I'm going to, um, share, teach you, describe you how I make the sculptures. It's a little bit repetitive, but it has a little bit of uh, variance, a little bit sometimes maybe um, complications, we could say it, because the way how the paper molds and move. But besides that, it's almost the same thing kind of over and over with different uh, variations of the use of the paper and the, um, not the glue I'm going to make, the paper and then cell. So for now, I'm going to move back here. And um, I don't know, sure if you got the email before the class begin today. We send it like an hour ago. Um, I'm going to make the glue in front of you. You can make it on your stove too. You can make it, uh, well, I'm going to make it and I'm going to let it cool down because it requires hot water. So, and then we put it on the side and then I describe other things. So here me, I'm using this electric thing. I'm going to put it to warm it up, it's working. And a container like this, you're going to have cold water. This is cold water around half of the container. Um, this amount of glue is almost going to become to be the same of this spot here, which is almost, oh, sorry, it has measurements, but not, but it's, uh, oh yeah, it's three liters, 3.2 uh, quarters on this. And this is one pine and the flower. So the water is getting hot, same thing on your stove. If you can make a boil, it's better. I would recommend to have the water very hot because you want to cook the flour. This is going to help you to dissolve faster, easy. But when it transfer into here, it should be hot. So it cooks and it changes the color. You will see. So I'm using regular uh, flour. You can use tapioca flour, you can use, uh, this is regular wheat, whole wheat, tapioca flour, and rice flour sometimes because it has that stickiness of that. So I never really calculate, but I put like a cup. That's what I think myself. And it's not a problem if you go more or less because you at this stage you can add water, right? So now I come in here. Whoop, let me move my seat. Yeah. And you want to make sure you know it's mixed. You can do it with forks too. Uh, and you want to have it uh, still liquidy. It's still, I have to make sure you know it's like that. This one never is going to get that thickness we're looking, but you can see, sorry, you can see on the bottom, like the thing is moving, so that means nothing is sitting there, but it still feels watery. So let's set for one quarter, one, uh, one pint of water, we can go almost to two cups of flour around that.
And don't worry if you use this for cooking, it's no problem. It's, this is non-toxic. This is regular flour and water. So you stir it right, I'm going back here. You know, I ask you for this so you can, or the, whatever side you can get in the small one or whatever, but the idea is this one, this glue is organic. So it's not going to last too long with this heat. You must refrigerate it. Put on the refrigerator after you finish for the class today or whatever you're doing later. You shake it very well. This is the same thing as a wheat paste. But this one is going to be thicker. Wheat paste, you can add more water and you know you use it for other things. Uh, like wheat paste, like almost putting on the walls uh, paper. The water is getting hot, I hear it. I'm going to start with a small batch because I want you to see how it changes of color, how it cooks. I don't want to make a mistake where I have to go to the stove quickly. And it's not really a mistake, as I said, you can add more water or more flour, but it's better to do this step first. Because when you put the hot water, it comes together and uh, it gets thicker, you know? Uh, so, okay. This is better now. It's a little bit foamy because I shake it very well. The thing on the bottom, you can see it, it moves, so it's nothing. And this time, it is a little bit uh, thicker. It almost feels like, um, I don't know if you have made before soy milk or rice milk at your house where you put on the blender, the lid, the components and it's a little bit thick, but not creamy, because it's not creamy at all. So let's say two cups of water for that amount of flour. The water is about to be boiled. I'm going to pour around half of this. A little bit, yeah, more or less on there. It's just white now because it's from here. I will come closer and I will show you how we change the color when this thing is almost ready. It's, well, it's, it's good to have it almost boiling because as I said, you wanna cook it. I make a mistake a couple times and if you don't cook it, your items you make later, it will create this type of insect, lard, because this flour is like a bread. So you have to make sure it's cooked. And that's what I said about the sealer too. Um, I have been doing a couple of things without sealer, but I have to make sure my glue, my paper mache, my wheat paste is cooked. So it's boiling now. It's going to turn off. I want to make sure it reached a nice temperature. When you stop, you can control it easy, right? So now it's coming closer again. You're not careful with this on your stove. So there it goes. You know, you see it's just white. It is the hot water. I'm going to add it. And now I'm going to mix it here. And it changes a little bit the color because to be less white, it's more like yellowish. But that's just because the other water was cold. So this is still pretty, pretty hot. I can't really put my hands there. So in case you have this problem that I did now, that you put uh, too much water, once again, there is no like big mistake. Just add flour quickly because your water is still hot. So I put like another cup. Mm. 
You see how on the top on the MS2 have that things? I have to dissolve it, everything. So sometimes that's what I said, it's easy to do it on the stove. Okay, so it's more mix. It's a little bit getting, sorry, it's more mixed set now. It's getting thicker. And if you see, it changed a little bit the color. It's not a white, white as before. It gets a little bit yellowish. And I'm gonna be honest to you. I think so, I'm going to put it on the stove for like a minute now, quickly. So you can see how really I want you to have it, okay? And I'm coming back. I'm going to put a little low fire so I can describe you something else. Okay, I come back. So that's the first step, and we'll go down quickly in a minute and show it to you. Um, I was collecting other items I was showing you, you can use, like paper tubes. We were talking about different other found objects. I just went to look for something quickly to show you. I was saying that you could have a radio or something to break apart and use it, right? Sorry. So for example, this one, it's pretty well done. Um, as you see, I'm going to describe you what kind of items you can wherever collect or your ideas or something. This light bulb is a regular light bulb, but it broke, but it only broke the thing that you attach on the bottom. So it's all, all intact. These four wires here is the cover from the wine bottles, the, or the soda, or the, um, ciders or something the like kind of fancy for decorations this one on the top too so i put the two and i put other type of small wire that you can find uh the uh crafts stores and i net i threaded i netted like a lot of african different uh or mexican uh type of crossing here i try to uh, on this side sorry this one this crossing thing there um Basically, so this here on the top is one of those of the wine things. I'm telling you this other one on the bottom here too, right? And this is going to be recorded too. So later we will send you the link so you can review it again. Um, and then I went with a small wider, sorry. I went with a small wider all around um, and I cross it, I loop it and went next back, next back. So the same amount of wire that I was using, I use it later here on the bar on the thing to connect it, right? This one, I don't know if you you can see this, but this is what they put on the electric meters. When you cannot open it, the electric company put it. So I just took it up, I found it, I fixed it. For some way I could plug it again, but then I could not take it off, so I leave it there. Um, that thing, this thing that's supporting the head, is a broken thing from the hand blenders, the mixer for mixing your flour and your eggs. It broke the other things that go on the top to mix. So I use, and this one goes all inside. I will describe you in another piece how later. Goes all inside. So this is like the skeleton. We have to give it a skeleton because if you break, you can fix it, right? If you don't put in a skeleton, you could fix it, but it's gonna be a little bit complicated. This is the electric wires, like the things for electricity in the house. This one doesn't have any more cables inside, but it's just that, so it's a little bit, well, it moves, because when I thread all these X, Y, back, this, uh, this, I mean, here in front, this way, and then X, right? Go here, 
then loop it down, go the other way, loop it the other way, left, right, so come back, left, right, back and forth, left, right. Um, so it moves this because it's not, before I put the wider, I use a little bit of the wires that come on your bread, on your vegetables, that you tie up the bag. That's how I just keep it on place. Then with the wider, start tying up first a little bit, and that's what it gives me that flexibility to do it. And these hands, I mean, this thing, as I told you, doesn't have anything, so that's why it shakes, because it's not wider inside, it's more flexible, look. So the hands, I will show you how to make hands, things like that. This is, these hands, I don't think so have bones inside, like a skeleton I was telling you. It's just pure paper, and we'll go through that description later. If you see this hand, is very nice, even through the, through the other side. This is what I told you, and sometimes the glue is not very well cooked, and what happened? You see that little holes? It's like this little type of insect that gets living there, and then it's not bad for your house, but you have, it died too, because it doesn't have any more flour to eat, but you have to cover it up again, and I put a lot of varnish later, and it still, it came back again. So, okay, give me a second, I'm coming back, I'm going to see the glue. All right, look, glue is done. I just put a little bit more on the fighter. I, I leave it a little bit over because I can quickly to, uh, I mean, I leave it longer on the fighter because I talk a little bit longer here. But then, then I just shake it again. You see, this is what we're looking for. Because you heat the water, the water evaporate, and then the flour start cooking. You see a little bit on the bottom brown, it goes a little bit kind of burned, but not that bad. You can wash it later. But now this is really cooked. This one will not give you the problem I'm telling you about the little larva insect that comes back sometimes. Also, I don't recommend to use newspaper. I think so that's the other problem because the newspaper, the ink, sometimes is organic like a soy. So I don't know if it that does some something in the paper but yeah so yeah like cream it's too hot now i'm going to put it down here so i don't touch it or something for now and i'm going to keep describing you So it's some type of colorful wire that you can buy at the art stores. And that is the red wire here. Here, this red wire and the other side too that you get to see. That one, you can go to a craft store if you want to get a fancy wire, it's up to you. But, um, okay, these wings are glass. These are uh, another one of the things I do. I used to work for the University of the Arts uh, and they have the glass studio next to something I used to do there. And they, somebody was making something of glass like a bowl and it broke and they just threw it away. And I went and I picked it up. When I was looking at what he threw away, I saw was glass, but I saw wings. So then I said, okay, I can use that wings for something and that's what I did. So you see, I just put the paper mache all around so I don't cut myself anymore. And this one, same thing here, it has a wider. Oh, sorry, here. You, you maybe can see a little bit line here. Uh, this little line, yeah, this little line, I'm moving my finger. Look here, yeah. That's a wider that goes all around and it's attached, so it goes, goes to here 
and all this way up here around the wing and it's back and the other one too does the same thing. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, that's gonna be easy now. So yeah, so everything goes around this wing and then it comes back this way and it goes around. So I made the two wings a pair, a pair first. And as well, first, before I attach the wings, I made the wings first with paper mache because it takes 24 hours or something to dry. And if you do it like very dark glue we made, like a very thin, it's gonna be very uh, hard as rock almost when you, um, when you do it. So, okay, keep going describing things, items. This is a broken old clock. The ones that, you remember the ones that were like digitalized, a little tiny wash on your hand? This is a wash that goes on, on your wrist. And I found it broken like that. So to me, you know, it's like the heart, like a broken heart. This, the belly button or something, is the uh, things that goes on the cars uh, to give the sparkle to start the inj injection. I forgot how it's called, but it has a ceramic thing. It looked like a pencil, the clock. This is that. Well, you know, uh, it's a smoking pipe. With a, it's the, the end of the pipe. And I use it as his tail. So one of those my pipes broke, I use it. When you want to take something apart, you're going to find a lot of different items. These, I think so you may know what it is, but if you don't know anywhere, we'll uh, describe it. It's the old hard driver from the computer like the tower computers before, like uh, desktops or something like that. And I show it here on the bottom. This is like, even here is the clip, look. Oh no, I think so it was a zip drive. It's not even a hard drive or something like that was. Look, I don't even remember what it was, but this is the thing they used to move to click it out from the, no, yeah, 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 it was a zip drive, look, because this part here it used to turn and that's what it used to read the, hard disk or something long time ago. So I took a part in the computer and I saved wires, I saved everything, and I saved this one, right? So here, once again, is that wire that was telling you that you can buy or something very fine wire almost for jewelry um, to attach it. So this is where the wire that you wanna buy or the clothes, clothes hangers work because all this thing here, and you can see here, I just thread it with the wire so it, you, people will not look at right away in the one on the center too. I, I, I thread it a little bit with wire. But this is the clothes hanger. I put it inside, I turn it like a B point, so I can attach the other thing that goes on to the bottom here with this one here too. And I put another wire too, so it balance. So if you can see it from, there, yeah, this one here goes inside, like I push it in, and this, o this other one too, I push it in. So it's three points, right? You have, I make three points, and then I just found a way. Outside, I thread it, so I use one of those of the screws or the same thing to attach the wire so it keeps in place. That's what I said, save all the screws, save everything. If you're going to make something like this or you try to make something um, very unique like that, so finding all that pieces will give more things to you as culture, to your life. And we're still not even going with the paper mache, right? This is just a description. Um, yeah, the hard driver, the thing, it turns. So sometimes that kind of cute things that you can save or use. This is just one foot base, right? And the same thing, these ones inside, I put wire, like I bent, oops, sorry, like this. I bent the clothes hangers. And by bending it, then I pull it in some way through the size and everything uh, to have like a skeleton wire sculpture. And by having that, if it breaks, I can fix it quickly. So the same thing on the back. I don't know sure about these ones. I don't know sure about that one. Um, so then look here, the wider, I was talking to you. 
the games all this way somewhere from the inside. Uh, yeah, mostly it's only that one. I think so the metal one went more inside, so I keep it. I think so the metal one went more inside because I want to keep in balance with this. That's what I did. So I went through all like that. So, and then we will talk about the paper mache technique. So you can see how it covered up. If you, if you come in close, if I come closer, you can see here like a two types, the, the lines, right? I use two different types of brown paper. Some ones are from the paper bags, the little paper bags. Some ones are from the big paper bags. Uh, some ones are darker than the other ones. You can use white paper too from that type of paper bags. Uh, so, yeah, okay. So this is well done. This is how I describe it. Uh, well, as I said, this will show you why I have it here and this one too. This one uh, broke because I did the mistake we using newspaper too. I will try to fix it in front of you two later in the other classes and today something too so you can see how I work with the paper mache. But I will not recommend to use newspaper. I will try to fix it. I don't know if it, this one, it will survive again later. But okay, here is part of the skeleton I was telling you, the wire. So it's another clothes hanger that goes on B to make the legs from the hips going down. I did not end it like a foot of it, sorry. So that was the mistake too when it broke. But you see some of the insects, whatever that was eating this, um, when the flour runs away, they don't have anything else to eat. So that's why you want to cook that flour. Possible newspaper will work if the flour else was very cooked. I don't know what really happened here. I may don't cook the flour very well, it's in a mistake. Okay, these, all these are memory cards for, for computer. And this one still was new. Somebody else gave it to me because they ordered extra and they don't need it. And uh, whatever, uh, it's like 15 years ago. So I put the four together and you can see here at the top how I put the wire and I just thread it. Uh, like a regular, um, I can show you another way too, but just basically you get the two things and just thread it. And just keep going and keep going and keep going, like thread it, thread it, and it will tie it up by themselves. So here again, the hang, hanger, the cloth hanger, this one went around, so I can put the thing from this wire, go up, and attach it to the top here, and attach the heads. I use whatever wire I can find, I'm telling you, whatever else I can use. Uh, and this one even tried to have a piece of tape. I was using it for something to keep it on place, but now they open it. So anything else you can use just to keep it on place is helpful for even rubber bands too, I use sometimes too. So this little thing, here the wings on this guy, is a little piece from that tubes that goes from your laundromat into the street. So if you found it or you change it or something, that pipe, uh, sometimes it's not too dirty. I don't think so this one was like dirty, that's what I save it. And I just cut a little piece. Uh, this was maybe the very small uh, one. There was maybe the two inches diameter. And when I start, you know, like if you're not careful, also comes in part very quickly. So that's what uh, I comes apart. I cut it and I bend it and I try to attach it uh, some way there. You see that's the wire here. And that loop goes in front, attached with this wire here. This guy. It's, again, just twist it. Look, I even just tie it up more now in front of you. Just twist it, twist it, twist it. It tie up. Bend it some ways so out of the way and keep the wings in place. So, in order to don't have your head moving too much, as I said, sometimes you can use the rubber bands, but I will do other things uh, to show you how to keep it in place when you are working. So, you see, it is just to have two heads 
and a weird, crazy uh, hands, only three finger hands too. Uh, and this is what happened when he broke. So I don't know how this will be another uh, next class. I uh, will show you more about this. So it depends now because we still have time. Um, and then this again is another one from the same electric cable uh, from the house. And I don't know what it was this. I just found it on the street. I pick it up and some way, somehow it could be screwed in there. And I just put it in. So there is no real uh, A, B, C to this. You can jump, you like the pump core style. You can start from C to D. It's going to meet somewhere when you start putting all the parts together, right? So this one, same thing as here that you can see, it was a little bit messed down here on the hips. And then I fix it. And then I try to give a little bit, you know, three dimension, make it funny, make it silly. Uh, that will show that with the paper. And here is one of those other things I was telling you from the bread or the bags, just to keep the paper there. I just toss, I just turn the paper around here and go around, go around. And oh, this has little wings on the end too. Look. Oh, that's why these things, this thing I was telling you is called in the wings. Same thing here. These wings on the on the feet and the leg, it should be attached with other type of wire like that too inside. And uh, sometimes, if you have a problem, you need to fix it. You must take everything away that's loose. But I would recommend. That's what I keep saying. Let's cook that glue very well, so you don't have. You see, it creates like some type of. Sorry, it creates. Um, it just creates some type of, here. I don't know, it does look, but I don't know. I, I don't know, like one time happens to another my sculpture, but not to all my sculpture, that's funny. That's the problem, but look, I'm telling you, this one, it has to be, yeah, look. So, careful with this. Or maybe it's because it's organic too, but if you do it right and you let it dry and then you uh, seal it, the sealer is going to help. This has a light varnish and all, and all the place, look here, it needs, oh, it looks neat more here, it was a mistake. So make sure that you seal it when it seals, it cut the air from going inside. So it will last just longer, right? So this guy takes a break now. I gotta keep breaking more on that one to see. I will talk about these ones in a second. Let me just move a little bit these dolls I create here, I don't want it. Okay, now we're talking about this one. This one is a little bit complicated to move it. Um, I will need to stay a little bit more far away here. It's a couple of things because it has a lot of things. That's the problem. It's a lot of things in one. Number one, this is the pipe I was telling you. And this is loose. I want to show you how to fix it and other things to use. So you can see what other items you may can use or something. But this, I just put the stereo phone inside to keep it tight. Um, as I said, if you pull these pipes too fast, it comes apart. So it's a little bit pain on the butt. But what we're gonna be using next class is gonna be the liquid nails. The liquid nails glue. We will put some like kind of crazy and smack it in and it will dry, and when it's almost dry, um, I will show you when it's closer, I added different weird item things. So you can collect weird items. So this one, open the doors here, 
And these flowers turn around. I don't know if you remember the old lamps that these things turn on colors and it turns around. Um, it was a lamp. This is a lamp. It should work. Let me see. You may cannot see it too much because it's too bright. Uh-oh, I got to fix it. Well, yeah, I got to figure out what happened. It's not working. But it, it has a mod, a motor thing that this thing turns around and moves. I may have to really, uh, well, we will see now. Maybe we take it apart in front of you. I'm going to disconnect it so it's safe. Okay, well, this one is going to be the real class now because I got to see what happened. Okay, this one again, the, the base, I painted after, right? All these weird colors is painted. But this is a computer thing too. Uh, and here is the size of the entrance of the, all the components. And I think so that one, this one used to be maybe like that. Oh, I don't know how it was. But anyway, it has all the other computer items there. And I use it to create like a sticking out from the tower uh, with the mechanic things inside and the flowers I was telling you. We'll take it apart so you can see it. And then I made, this is the skeletons I was telling you. Look, it's a little bit complicated because it's falling apart now, but it should be attached. It should be like a sitting down there with the legs hanging. Uh, that's the legs. The legs are hanging and the arms too. And you see, this is what I said, this is the galvanized wider, it's a little bit flexible. And these are the feet. Sorry, I just bend it back. Yeah. So uh, this one, I uh, start making loops oh, like this one. Let me describe you like this. When loop, this one loop, 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 loop. So if you, um, give me a second. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for that. This is what I did with the wider. So I just show what I did, but once it should be thicker because it's the toe. The last one should be smaller because it's the pinky. You need to have that in reference, right? But when you do that and then right? And then like that, when you go on here, whatever this wider can come. Whatever this wider can come and go around and tie up everything and goes up. Here. The other, pan, the other thing broke now, that's kind of cool because it's less carrying around. So, and if you don't want to use this, that's what I said, you can say the colorful computer wire. And that will be like a plastic, right? And it will be colorful. But I use this one because I want to have this weird looking metal because this one I call it a uh, industrial part. So I was trying to make that one, right? So whoop, come apart. 
We'll see. Once again, this thing here is one of those of the wine things, again, or the sparkled waters that has that special thing for Christmas. I think so some people know that this one is, uh, they don't make it anymore, so these ones are very hard to find. No, I think so you can buy it, but it's hard to find anymore on, uh, like on the streets before, on the old televisions. But that's what I mean, if you want an old television and you want to collect some weird junk, this is something, you know, like, so this is the head, and it comes down attached to the hands. And I think so this wire I used here already was for something else, and it got uh, broke, but I can't fix it. So, all that wine thing, the wine, the tolling, sorry, holds this thing, holds the arms here at the center, the shoulders. And now here I just make like a little tiny loops, almost like the jewelry closing loops. And with these loops, I put a loop next to the other one so they can turn, and they can stay together. So there, and again here the hand. Same idea as I show you in that drawing. So for reference again, this is the drawing. This is the hand in reality in some way, the wider. And then you have to keep turning it and turning it and turning it and find different ways to tie it. Maybe bring up like what I did here on this green the knuckles. I just went over left, right, whatever you think is going to tie it up. And as I said, it's no wrong or A, B, C, but you have the body of the skeleton. Now, look, if I look on this one here, it goes up here, it goes, it turns around, and some way this one keep going on there and it meets with pinky. But if you do the same loop I told you, one of those wires, you can loop it different ways to tie it, almost like a shoe leaf, like when you are making different type of uh, um, threadings. But this wider, that's why I said the galvanized wider is more flexible. You can manipulate better. So it doesn't have that problem that's going to get loose when you are working on that. So between you get the idea what you try to make, it will start giving more volume and looking when you start adding it wider you know so so it just depends how you want to end it so the two hands and the two hands are different because i can't even repeat the same thing i kind of describing you it's the nature it will go left or right or something and you gotta say oh okay uh, this hand is a little bit thicker and skinny or the other one. Maybe I got to go this way, the other way. Uh, oh, sorry. I got to go this way, the other way to figure out how you get. You see, this one is more wide and this is more skinnier. Uh, but the same thing. Then I have to found, make a loop, like the jewelry loop. I call it like that, like a reference, like a necklace. But it's just to attach it. It's just simple loop. There's nothing else uh, fancy about this, it's just a loop. So this is the hands, this is the head, I'll show you the feet. The other one is the same version, the one that was here. This one is still attached, but it's the same idea. It just has skinny long legs. And this is the arm, uh, let me come this way. Yeah, this is the arm, the hand, we were talking about it, was attached to the shoulders, the head. This is a north dog, right? Uh, the doors, the one that doesn't have nothing. Uh, these ones, you found it, this one I found it on the street because already was uh, twisted, it was broke, and somebody just leave it on the street or whatever, or fall down from somebody's uh, whatever. Um, and I just pick it up. 
So once again, I use that twisted wider before like the other body. This one lasts longer, did not crack, did not broke, sorry. The other hand we were talking about, it's not gonna be the same as the other one. This, this one even feels heavy, this hand. I think I put too much uh, wider at this end here. That's why it feels heavy. But this one is different than that one. So never expect that will come almost similar. That's something. And then, you know, the legs are here attached to the hips. Okay. And then this one, the cable, the, le the electric here goes in because I got to feed the electric inside from here. So, this one possible, as I said, is a mess. And if I keep looking it up and I try to take things out to give me a space, um, I have, this was just possible. Okay, I use the stereo phone on this. I remember why now. Because when I tried to attach the electric tower, whatever it was, this lamp here, it has like a three standing things and end up attached to there with the styrofoam. So it kind of went in. So, well, sometimes if your items are too messed up, <laughs> like these pipes, I cut them and use it for different parts, right? But now, as I was telling you, I will describe you what I did on this. This one, oh, okay. That's what I said. Sometimes you need to have random little tools. For my idea, I screwed it to attach it. Sometimes I use a little screws to attach things. Just to keep, possible just to keep it in place but it doesn't really hold anything. So now we put it here on the table. Oh man, this is a, sorry. Yeah. All right, well, so it goes around. Please, a lot of things to cover up, which may have to use something different next week. I don't know what I will be using. I like this shiny looking, but I always thought that this would give me this trouble. Okay. Okay. So we were talking about the feeding electricity. If you want to play with this too, it's up to you, whatever. But this is a regular cable Sometimes some people threw away the toaster that doesn't really work or something that doesn't really work. I cut the cable and I use it later because it has a safe thing to plug it back. So you don't have to struggle with that. So this one, this cable goes through inside, comes through the pipe here. And it goes, into feeding the electric part. That was telling you. This is the electric part here. This one looks safe, doesn't look like so. I hope it's only a technical thing from that thing or really this thing died. So let's make a test again now because it's still safe now. No, it looks like this thing died. It's dead. I thought, but it used to work. It used to turn this thing around. Oh yeah, well. And it used to have like a color disc inside that give different tones or color. You can see it there. 
and they used to turn. And the light bulbs here, the little light bulbs there, they used to give electricity. It was pretty nice. I really like it. But it's dead now. Mother died, something happened. Okay, well, this is no, it will look cool when it's done again, but it's not going to do what I thought it will do. Okay, so we go back. All right, well, so you saw a lot of uh, internal and external things from the uh, so-called sculptures, right? Um, let's take a look at the glue for now. Okay, cool down, it's still hot on my end. Still, still hot, but look, it's pretty thick. And that's how you want it. You could add a little more water or make sure you don't get it that too uh, thick, right? But this is good, it's, it's, it's cooked. You see the color, it will change this. You cannot see it too much with the reflection of the light, maybe like that, look. It's like amber looking. And you will see it like that. So anyway, for example, you want to create something too long. That's what I said, these tubes. Uh, this is just another idea. I'm going to give you a lot of different descriptions today. And let's see how I start working with this culture. I wasn't prepared for that one. So this one, these two tubes, you want to make something hollow and long, for example, some whatever I plan to do. I just put the two together to make sure it's like that. Then I can put another one, another one, another one, depends on how long it is. This is the paper I'm going to be using. It's recyclable name. Uh, I found it somewhere. I think it was from the packing material. And I thought I would use it one day because I like the color, as I'm telling you, the brownish. And this paper doesn't have any ink. If I don't have any ink, I think so, I think so avoid that thing I was telling you, right? So you can use brown paper like this, they call it brown craft paper or the one of the post office to protect your package. Um, paper bags. Uh, this one even has a yellow paper inside too. So this is more yellow and this is more brownish, right? You know, this is whatever the tape on that, you don't need it. All right, uh, simple things now, how to work with the paper mache. So you can practice a little bit uh, more before next week uh, or something. Sometimes save any type of paper because you never know what things you will need. I will not recommend the plastic. No, I will not really. So, whatever. This one is more like a dry, like permanent market. The ink is different, but I try to avoid ink. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you two ways quickly about the paper mache, how I use it, and how you can get ideas for some things. Let's say you want to make something like the, when they make the hollow piñadas or something that you want to stick two parts together uh, or maybe this is going to be the, I don't know, sorry, maybe you're making a mushroom. This is the thing at the top of the mushroom. Maybe you can make a bowl to a paper mache and decorate it. This is a mold now, that's what I try to describe you. It's up to you. I use a little bit of uh, Vaseline. This is more therapeutic, but this was free from pen students go away on the uh, pen Christmas last year or something. So I did not bother. I just found it. That's how I collect some junk too. I live nearby University of Pennsylvania, so I always found some junk. So this one, I you just going to use a little bit of this to protect your hands because in that way you could clean it faster after. 
And also, it's good to put some of these on your containers you're going to use your molds. If you want to make a deer head, an animal head, or something, look, same idea on this. It's a mold. So, you put a good amount, rub it on your hands, and then just very quickly, you don't need a lot. So, there's one big water, it will reject it. This is the top of the lamps, the standing lamps from IKEA, the cheap lamps. This is what it is because it's plastic, it's not even glass. So um, the lamp broke from my friend, he doesn't want the lamp. And I said, oh, I have a plastic dish, I need something to use it. So that's how I found this. Okay, I have my glue that we made, paper mache glue, wheat paste, and uh, in Spanish they call it engrudo. Uh, you're going to cut pieces of paper, depends what you're going to cover on the size, the things you are covered, but a strap. Okay, someone's, depends what you do, someone's can be thicker, longer, or something like that, right? If it's something that's going to be flat, you can just put a flat, right? But if it's something has volume like this, what you're going to do, sometimes it's very good that this paper just do this. So it gets flexible, All right? Open it again. Then you're going to do random cuts, not all, just half. Every two inches, every three, three inches, every one inch, depends what you cover in up. Oh, have all that ones there, right? Uh, you can see how it's twisted for the same reason, right? So if you have here and here, right? I'm going to cut something in metal right here on the bottom. So it's alternative. I'm going to alternate that cuts now. After I alternate that cuts, basically, give me another one. So this is one like a uh, extra here, and then you have another one almost on the other way, the positive way somewhere like that, right? Uh, this is up and this is down. So anyway, it goes just like, once again, my drawing here quickly. Uh, so you cut Randall in here, Randall in here and one in metal on the bottom. You wanna alternate it. That's how you wanna. That's how you wanna do it. Cut here. Cut here, and one in metal, one here. If you just keep going long, another here, and another this way. So it's one and one, one and one, one and one. That uh, process will allow you to this to go around very easily. All right. Don't be afraid. It feels sticky. That's the idea of the glue. You can put it on your hands too. Now, you want to cover up the paper with the glue. You want to um, give it a little bit rubbing. Sometimes I said like a massage. Look careful, it breaks because we did that coating. And also the glue is going to start uh, acting on the paper. And it's going to start making the paper. You will see how it changes of color, it becomes like more brown, darker. And just you want to make sure that you go all around with the glue, uh, spread it very well. This one is a little bit too thick, but it's even better because it ends harder and it's really, really cool. When I went downstairs, it was boiling and it was almost getting a stick. So I just got right there on the last minute before it kind of get burned. Then burn, you know, I just stir it around. Uh, if you think it's too thick, add, add a little bit water and stir it again and just wait up to everything look uh, one color. Omegionize, like uh, the chemistry war, sorry, when two things becomes one. Okay, look, so now you see even the little white things here is the uh, extra or the glue, right? It doesn't matter now. So we have our mold, as I tell you, it's from the lamps. The thing goes down here and the light will comes out right there. Some way, somehow, if you want 
If you want to all 100%, forget about the whole, right? And if I want to do like that, something 100%, what I do, I start going across. So you see that little cuts I make? It's going to help to the paper to fold and move freely where the paper want to rest. And just go slow, push it around, take your time. Oh, here I have that hole there and I'm going to touch it. You see this paper is flying. The reason it's flying uh, like here is because now uh, this is going to overlap or to move around. Look, when I press it and it just move around, it falls nicely and you keep going. Look, go up and down, left and right. Kind of let it, the paper do themselves thing too. You can leave a little bit extra later. Uh, you can always bend it back when it's dry, cut it. Uh, this one, you see, this one is drying very fast because it's the first in the heat I have now here on my house too. Uh, so this is how you go. One, then as I say, you will have another one. Uh, they have that one. Sometimes you can do it, this thing first. Same thing I did before. On dry, you can do it too with the glue. This one will allow to, to get the water or the glue into the paper. Sometimes when they are skinny, like this one, you don't have to do that T. I call it T's uh, to do the adapting into the mold. This is kind of skinny and then so they will adapt. So you always, when you want to work in big pieces, you want to go on cross. Why? Because you want to uh, thread. Uh, you want to make sure everything gets, uh, as you see it here, one on top of the other one, and then you go like, you see how this is a skinny that doesn't need to do what I did, sorry, this is a skinny that doesn't need to do what I did on the other one. Just have to take my time to let it be. The thing is going to tell me where to where I want to go when I we press it. And sorry, I'm sorry. Then sometimes you want to really press because you want to take that extra glue you leave. But also by doing this, you are uh, are giving the paper more of that glue, the water glue it needs. And if it happened that, same thing. Just get a little bit more glue and rub it in but try to take the excess away. However, the paper is telling you, the mold that you are using in is telling you. So if you wanna make a piñada too, just you have to blow a balloon and cover up. I would recommend to do several layers, like five to seven layers, so it's thicker and it doesn't break too quickly because you know, you, you, the paper can be a uh, little bit thin and it will break. So, once again, it breaks. So this is what I was telling you. This is a little bit repetitive. Depends, this one is weird, right? Uh, I'm going to cut it before. It's easy to cut it before. Sometimes when it's wet, you have the problem that you can go too fast and break it. So once again, here, here, I go in, if it's this, now I go in here on top and metal. And then return, and then remember where I was, go here, alternate it. All right? This uh, wheat paste is a little bit too thick, I'm gonna be honest to you, but it's okay. Me that already worked on this before, I know how to use it, but I would recommend having a little bit more liquid, not like a sour cream, or like, sorry, like a hand, like lotion, not like a lotion, but maybe like some type of uh, more cream for the body, like that feeling. That's what you want uh, to have. So you make sure that you spread the glue, you make sure that uh, your paper fill them, that's the important. So now that we have this again, 
going on top. I cross it. Okay, look, and then this cuts. You may want to use something to cover yourself sometimes. I always do different things, me, so all my shirts are messed up anyway. But it gets a little, if this thing comes out from you close right away because it's just water and, and flour, but you know. Some people say, well, why you don't just get one big piece and put it on? You could, but if you want to have it smooth, it's not going to do that if you just you crumble things. A lot of people use the other paper mache that's like a powder and mix it with water. I don't like that one. I don't. I don't think so. It looks uh, natural to me as a paper. It looks just like um, human um, vomit, sorry, or something like that. I don't know what to say now about that. It does disgust me. But anyway, look, I use a whole piece. I want the other way. So as I said, there's no wrong label, right? A, B, C. It's just basically the main thing. You want to have your paper damp. You don't want to have this thing to dry as, a, as mentioned it. Uh, and then just rub it. And then, same thing here, we were talking about the other teeth. This is what I was telling you, it's better when it's dry. I won't try to cut that teeth. It's a little bit difficult now because the paper is not too stiff. It doesn't allow me to decide what I want to really cut it. So that's what I do it the other way. And I'm sorry, sometimes I do other things besides this, so I forget uh, what I do first all day, but then, then it comes naturally to me. <laughs> I try to do the alternative hints th things here, and it's getting complicated with the paper. Uh, all right, so once again, this one here, and now I'm going to put it on the center because I tried to cover that hole I have there. And so you're going to look, even you uh, overlap something that has these little things, you can come back later and fix that. Because you're going to put more layers of this. So as I said again, if this was a piñata, you have to go over, over, and over over and over and over. So after you don't see any of these white, right? It has to be all brown. Uh, you go that way, as I told, I was describing you here. Uh, once again, if it dries too much quickly, whatever, just add some more of that. And it will tie it up. You see? So, as here, this is just bulky paper. Sometimes you will see how it feels the thing. If you feel something bulky on the bottom, maybe it's extra glue, maybe something you forgot from the other paper. But it's up to you. Me, I like that smoothness of the paper, right? Because it's very smooth. That's how I like it, me. That's how I like that. That's how the hands on my other sculpture look very smooth, because I take my time to smooth it out. And after you do something, you could put the five layers, so these are the seven layers. You still need to wait a day or 12 hours, depends on the heat. When it's dry, it will come out from here. And you can fix some mistakes, bring it into the light. You see how you can see that white and the brown? You will be able to see it when you take this apart and the light will go through to some other places. It's like, oh, all right, you know, here is, uh, here is very dark, uh, right? Here is very, this good. But the light looks like coming out through here somewhere, right? Oh, so I gotta put in more paper. So when you take it off, you look at it, and you say, oh, uh, okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, I see now through the light. It needs more in here and there, A, B, C. So you keep going and you keep going. As I tell you, it's gonna be very repetitive. Uh, this one, but this is for molds, for piñadas, uh, and the concept of layering, and the concept of covering, because 
you have to do like three, four layers, five layers to each thing to have that thickness you want and the film of the thing you make it, you want, right? It has to be firm too. So I just put more of that glue here. Do the same thing as I told you before to make it flexible. Press it. To give it like a little massage. And open it again. So also if you have like a mask mold or like a maniki or like a, you know, like something like that, you can cover up that one with a Vaseline too. Do this in a small strap and put it all around the different types of the face and everything else and make a mask. Same idea with this. So this is just one main idea I'm giving to you and I will change now. So look, once again, I just wanna make sure it's going to cover up the part I want to be covered. Go around lines there. Here. The first layer always is going to be more difficult because you Vaseline and the container maybe reject the paper a little bit but because water and oil doesn't meet. That's why. But after the second layer, your paper should be more smooth on top of the other one, like we did here on the top, because the paper is just paper now. Um, it's no more of the plastic or the Vaseline. You see, I keep, sorry, I keep opening, spread it, and Sometimes, as I said, if it dries too much, get a little bit more of that glue and spread it, almost like cream on, on your hands, on your body. So just to tie it up on there, I put a little bit more, and I'm going to put it here to demonstrate to you, like, how it comes to be almost like easy to move, look, you see after layers of paper. And then you gotta be careful here because I told you the paper, the water and the oil reject themselves. But after you do it like this, like you have more layers, you can see it on the thing. You can see it here too on the, how the light looks and everything you can see. So that's the idea, all right? So you're going to keep going, you're going to keep going. And that's just one process of the paper mache, right? Um, now, if we go in, into the sculpture point of view, uh, this one will go more next week because I will have the items I need. Uh, let's try to fix this guy here. Coming here in front. So we talk about parts for a skeleton, right? And this is your skeleton. Uh, you know, some way, somehow, we will attach the head so the head doesn't fall down, uh, you see? But this is something like that. So here, if I wanna first attach this part here, this is what I'm going to do. It's going to be almost to the same idea as before, but now it's going to change a little bit. Paper. Bunch of paste, with paste, uh, in grudo, uh, you know, flour and water. We want to put it up. We want to make it very uh, flexible. This one, as I said, it has a lot first. In some way, don't worry too much. You will see why now. So I'm spreading it now. The idea is your paper has to be damp. Always remember, look, good, it breaks. That's what you want. It's damp there, so it took the water very well, look, yeah. Okay, so now this one, a uh, random looking piece of paper, uh, thick and skinny on one end, whatever it looks. I'm gonna to try to fold it in half, however I can, right? Somewhere there, it's half. 
uh, of the paper. Now, we're going to start from the center, a metal, sorry. And remember, I was telling to you about the twist, when to twist it. Twist it, twist it, twist it, twist it, like you try to squish a towel. Same idea. And then remember, as I was telling you, start again from the center, and you're going out one direction first, pressing it too, so you take out the extra, the extra glue, or the extra thing that will be inside. Same thing on the other way. Turn it and press it and squish it towards out towards your hand, and it's going to take out the extra of the glue. But this one now is very damp, it's very thick, and it has a lot of the glues, and it's a thicker glue. So that means this is going to dry very hard, almost like a rock, like a hard bread. You know how the hard bread, it gets very hard sometimes, you smack it in the table, it doesn't break? Something like that, this is the idea. So let's tie it up, okay. Oh, this one, here is where my tricky part comes. Um, depends how I wanna make this look now on here. I maybe wanna, I may wanna leave this thing on the center, not touching here. So it's kinda cool looking, that kinda like the head try to connect, but it's not really connected through here, it's only connected to the sides. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going to get this same thing. I'm going to flood it now. I twist it and now I flood it, right? So now don't worry that you put ex uh, uh, extra glue on this. You can protect it if you want, but it peels right away because it's not paper, it doesn't react. Look, you see? It just went under. Maybe pull it a little bit. Yep, it's working. So you see, I told you it's not left and right, which is what it is sometimes. Okay, look, it's like the other part on the shoulders, right? So now this one, as I was telling you here, uh, you can go back one side, and the other one you can go cross it on the back. Okay, let me cross it first here on the back for me. This is what I did on the back. Then again, twist it to the other side, put it here, and just wrap it around however you can. And this is gonna be the first concept. This is not the final covering layer, so don't worry. So now, oh, here. So now I press in. Why do I press in? Because I wanna take that extra air. Possible that extra air is what it makes that uh, situation I was telling you too before. So, just press and you will feel how the paper goes into whatever wants to go because now it's just like a pole. But it's not like a real pole. It's mostly like fabric pole because it's, it's flat paper, you know, it's all together. So I did it like that, look, oops. So if I hold it from here now from the bottom, it's more stable, you see? So once again, when I said you can have different items to work, different tools, I'm going to use this screwdriver to press in here, look. I press inside. So I push the paper down too, and try to see if I can give the sense I was telling you that wasn't not connected. But I maybe was confused myself, it's connected. I did not remember, I can see it now, it's connected. Sorry, I press in. You have to go all ways possible that you can. So now when I press that one, everything on here, inside here, uh, inside here, it went down. I compress it, so it's firm. Once again, look, it looks more, looks more firm now. Look, even I shake it, it shakes a little because it's still fresh. But okay, so this is one thing. Um, let's put the arms on the center. It moves a little bit, right, the shoulders like that okay this one step 
The same step we did on here is going to be repeated for the shoulder. But I will show you again how. So you want to leave it resting in an area. Whenever you leave it resting, that's how it's going to end up looking. So for now, it's going to move, it's going to blah, blah, blah. When you get tired, when you cannot do it no more, when you think it's final, you're going to find a place where it's going to be resting. Nobody's going to touch it because the way how we leave it is the way how it's going to hurt the paper. So just put it in a corner somewhere. Um, more paper. So this is still is just the process of how to use the paper, right? And I described some of the things in the beginning. As I said, this is going to be recorded. Uh, it's going to be a link for you. Uh, but I think so. Um, Gina will send that later. So this is my paper. Once again, wet it. I tell you, it's very repetitive. And it's a little bit like meditating sometimes because you, you kind of move the same muscles, like a memory muscle, just do the same thing. Make it very damp, make it flexible, open it again. It doesn't have to be open all 100%, depends. I just try to show you how I do it, because I like that smoothness at the end. Fold it in half. Doesn't have to be exactly. Just trying. Then maybe again here. And remember from the center, from the middle of this, twist it out one side first or the other one. I will do the two so it gets firm first. You know, like if you're squishing your towels, you close, same idea. So now one side I turn it and I press in and I push it out too to take out the extra glue inside. This one didn't have too much. This paper was thicker, it feels thicker, it feels nice. Okay, you see here, this one, we're not going to flood it. You're only going to flood it if you maybe want to go through something as I did, or you want add building ups, like if you want to do like the banks, you can put this on top of the final of your project, and then we'll describe it later, how you can use it to create three-dimensional things. But, so this idea, oh, here, sorry, space out. This one, I'm going to start it right here on the metal, look. And I'm going to bring it, first I'm going to hang it it doesn't matter what is front or back now, we will describe that later, but almost like you put in, uh, in a scarf, you're going to twist it. Then after you twist it, go around and tie it up as we describe it. On the way, maybe on the top, maybe on the bottom, you will see how the paper want to move. and put it on there, twist it. This is gonna be a little bit tricky because the thing here is still moving, but I put the fingers here. You can, that's, I cover the camera, but or the, whatever you're looking, but this. Sometimes when I cover the camera and you cannot see, that means you have to hold it from there too. You know, you have to find a way to have it. So now I have it here holding it, and this is my trick to twist it and to tie it up. Same thing on the other side. I turn it a little bit, I get it from there, and I twist it to have the uh, thickness I'm looking for. Put the other side look too. I just change because I remove that thing. So, okay, this thing twists. Okay, I want it like that, something like that, right? So, 
the first time, the first time that we put in the paper, it doesn't matter how can I look, we will fix it more later. Uh, this is going to be the first process. It's going to take you, you know, two, three hours, whatever amount you want, depends on the type of sculpture you want to make. But this is a lot of time, effort, consuming time, but it's good to hang out with people, talk, uh, share how to do the paper thing, uh, and just creativity. So look, you see I keep toning it because I like it how it's moving, how tight it will be for me. So you see there is a little bit of even on the shoulder, so I'm just going to pull it more on one side, so it's more even now, uh, like that. Uh, all right. So I'm going to show you something else to give more volume on the top, to make it maybe even, but maybe you can leave it like that and one side can be more like, like that, you know? Uh, but I will tell you what else I will do on this now. Once again, same process, paper, make it damp, it's very important. This glue is a little bit uh, too dry, but look, you see, even, even my thing, look. So yeah, look, this is how strong it's gonna be when it dries because this is, I'm not, I'm not kidding you, I try to, to separate it and it gives me a little bit of like, I don't know, you can hear it. But. Okay, so anyway, so I put in it on, and here, smoother it. Again, same process. Always it's gonna be this process. Do this. Sometimes when you get random paper cuts, you can use it to create different shapes or that twisted thing. So now, for example, here, I'm only going to cover up this one here on the top, so it's even at the top, mostly, mostly so, sorry. And you see, then maybe again, put this one here. So now I make almost like two layers paper. Because we're talking about layering, but this is not for the layering. This is for the same thing we're doing with the other one. So it goes again, once again, same thing. And why I'm going to use this one now, because I was telling you, um, Depends how you wanna add on the shoulders or something, but look, this is still kind of moving. I need to close it on here before that. Uh, this one, I maybe want to put it on top of here to give more shoulder and top of there, on top of the bottom. So sometimes when you make something like that, you never know what is going to happen. Open it and the paper is wet, break it on two, just like that. Now you have two on the same thickness, maybe not the same length, but you have two at the same thickness now. So having these, it help you. For example, I wanna put this one, the thick to the skinny, just there resting, that's all. Just on the bottom, resting. Same thing on this. Now this skinny one, sorry, this short, this short one, going to put it on here, on top. So now I have more like thickness, uh, just for the thickness. They are resting there and has the glue so they're attaching on the bottle and they're gonna be solid too. So now this, this, it's still like a skeleton on paper mache, right? It's still is no, uh, you see I press it to avoid that gap. You gotta spend your time to figure out how good you want your art piece at the end, right? So now uh, I'm going to leave it here a little bit so I can describe the other step. Sometimes if something doesn't uh, stick, just put more of this one and use it, Use it like a glue in some way. It will help you to keep it in place. Okay, so now I have another piece. For the size I'm doing now, this one is too big. This one, it's okay. Now I get some of this again. 
and I glue, I do the same thing on my paper, remember? Over and over. This is the monotone, monotony of these, but sometimes it's, it's easy because it's not really way to mess up because it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's very wet damn paper, you know? And, and then, um, as a pastime, it's very good too because you're moving all these fingers, so all the things on your brain are having an exercise there. So this is my paper. Now I'm going to fold it in half. I mean like this. Remember, try to take out the ex excess of the glue. This one, possible for the size I have. It's still, look, this is good for the size I have. So remember that we talk about these cuts, right? This is are very important when you're going to make something smooth at the end or when you are doing like the first thing I described about the piñada or the molds or something that you want to pop out from something. So the paper really molds very nice into what you want. The reason I do it on here is because I don't know how it's going to end up now on my sculpture. Okay. This is the sculpture, right? This is the paper. We already put the twist around to give three dimension or something looking, right? So look, I look in at the way how the paper look, I look in at the sculpture and I start thinking and I said, okay, I'm going to start from here. Put it like a bandage. Like if somebody hurts, go hurt. Go around, maybe one or twice and compress it as we were talking. Look, my other piece fall, it's okay. We'll pick it up. So I can show it to you what to do, sorry. So I just went around, like you put a bandage into the thing uh, there. Then when it's one round, I'm going to twist it over to the other side. Same thing like a bandage when you try to put it on, on your hands, on your fingers or something, look. And that smoothness of the paper that's not twist, twisted on this one is going to get covered up by the new one that you put on. And that twist part that we were putting inside, now are, you cannot see it. So, but guess what too, as I talked before, you gotta press it to take out the extra air. You want to make sure it's no air because I think so that's what happened to the other sculptures too. And you can always keep adding it more before you do this, but I just tie it up, look. And you can compress it down too to make it thick and give like, you can leave this little loop so that it show up. Or no, we will talk more about that. But now on this side too, press on the bottom, press on the top. Press back and forth to take out the air. Because if you're taking out the air, as I say, we don't have the other problem we described before, but also to taking out the air, it helps to tie up whatever pieces you try to tie up and they still, they stay more together. Okay, so same thing again. It never ends on here on paper on Oshia land. You gotta keep going. So, Sometimes when people say, hey, your sculptures are very nice, but I don't think I want to pay the money you ask. I say, well, you don't know how many time I put. It's not about the uh, art on money for me, but I think about it and I just let you know that it's good kill time. It's good entertainment because it consumes a lot of time to make it, things like this. So once again, this is like that. This is basically the other half from the other one. Fold it. I stretch it so it's smooth. That's how I like me, right? You can leave that lines and make it look different, like whatever. So here, look, I'm going to go half again on here. You know what? This one, no. It's going to be difficult to control. So this one here, Cut it on half, make two. This one, it feels a little bit dry. I'm going to put more of this glue. Also, it's the weather we have now, you know. 
uh, things dry faster. When it's in winter, it may take longer. You know, you gotta put the heat on your room or whatever, put it in a place where it's air. All right, so this feels more damp now, it looks very flexible. Um, I did whatever part, I went to do the other side. This one, um, I don't have to do the cuts as I was telling you. I did the other one just to remind you, this one not, and I will tell you why, because it's still not the final cut, uh, cover coat. So I'm going to figure out, look how I can place it, yep, it's there. I'm going to figure out how I can place it. So also I can, from the, my size here, this one, press it down. So now it's covered up the front part, look. And it's here, right? As I said, sometimes things will change. You're gonna be able to figure it out here, 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 to figure it out. You can even go through, it doesn't matter. Look. Break it and use it as coder and pull it up. Yep, it doesn't matter if it break because I'm telling you, this is just to tie it, like the bandage. It's not the final thing. Maybe this one, I will figure out later, but the way how I'm doing it, I just pressing it and, and tying it. I just went around. I keep going around. Just went all around, however I can go. Look, it broke, it's fine, look, this one. Just going to put it right here in front to cover up. I there is the other mold. You don't want to see that white. You don't want to see the other paper you put before. Yellow, you can put white paper. Don't use newspaper. We'll talk about that before. And this one already is getting like that fluffy. Like, like, look, when you feel it's getting that fluffy, the sticking on you, get more of this glue and squish it around. What it means, the paper is already kind of drying, but it's uh, not enough glue to hold it on place. So it's just press back and forth, left and right, whatever you can. I said the other tool doesn't matter. You have too much extra. You can clean it later with another little knife, to scrape all the thing out. Look, I press it here, go around, however I can move my hands on. Here thing. Decide to twist it to take out the air here to press it all this way up here from the bottom uh, into the into up 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 here. So it keep it firm and tight. And then now if you were be doing it too or whenever you are doing it, you will see that it feels solid now. It feels like clay almost. Uh, And you see this, it went a little bit more to one side, but able to push it and put it on the center. Now this side is thicker than this side. So that one is where I have to work more to put more into the other side. Into the side that's less thickness. So how we fix that thing too, will be the same thing as we did before. You're going to get in a small one, small piece of paper. Uh, you saw not the paper mache glue, wheat paste, and grudel, whatever it's called now. And same deal, torn it, twist it, squish the extra, twist it, and make like a little, uh, uh, I don't know, a little uh, warm, <laughs> little torn it, twist it, torn it, twist it, torn it. This guy, this is a small guy, it's going to help us on the side that's skinny. We're going to put the skin, the, the thick part is going to be resting next to the neck and the skinny part is going to come out to the arm, I mean to the shoulder. Just going to place it on place, I'm telling you, first doesn't really matter. Look, even you have this thing here, or once again, you flat it too. 
here it goes what we talked before you can flood it if you flood it maybe it looks look it looks a little bit better on that side where i put it now well you cannot really see it too much because the paper is just paper but if i move it here look this is where i put it just rest it on there so now i give in this the same thickness almost as the other side and just to cover up i'm going to get uh the other paper that we wet before for the small part and this is here where the final touch is coming up now the pencil you wet it and you put it there and like a band-aid turn it smooth it out put more of that glue press it so it goes around take out the extra and after you put that piece of paper there, you don't even see how it was. It's just like that. So if I keep going, I'll go on this side too, right? The other side. So I'm going to do the same thing. I have my paper that I was using before that make it double thick. Now I'm going to open it and I still have one piece. Feels a little bit drying because the weather of my house. I just put a little bit more of the glue, make it a damp again. And this is the side I fixed. But still, I don't like how it's moving on the top here. So I'm going to try to put another one here that goes around. Uh, however, however, I can put it in the back, look smoother it out. And then move it out then the same on the other side look just go around and go 100 percent around so like a bandage or like something it creates and pull from one side to the other side and by doing that you are restrained and giving more strange more stability to your piece Okay, this one here on the top looks like the air is making a puff. We're going to get a little bit more of that glue and I'm going to put it there and I'm going to press it in. Um, as I said before, you're going to use different tools. Now this is screwdriver here. This is screwdriver here. It's going to be my friend now. And this thing goes down here, goes down here, goes down here down here on whatever points I can put it on because I try to compress the paper because that's why you want to have a more solid structure. And the same way, even your tool, it will pick up the extra glue because it's pushing it away too. And now just smooth it out always at the end so it looks nice and take out the extra glue too here it goes still moving but remember when you're going to let it set when you're going to let it dry that's where you want to leave this piece so for example now this is my table my work table i'm going to place it I'm going to do the last touch-ups, tie-ups, however I want to end, right here, pressing, pressing, whatever I have to do, right? Use my two hands, and the way, and then maybe turn it the other side, and do the same thing. And now I'm going to let it rest like that, because that's how I want that thing to end harder. Then later, I mean, if I want to make it faster, I get the hair dryer and I start drying it, you know? But if you already work for like an hour, two hours on this, and I need a break, I need to eat or whatever, just let it rest. Then when you come back, it's going to be a little more harder. And then you can see whatever else you want to add more paper or not to your piece. So after, after the U1, that thing has going to be looking, I would recommend again to get a little bit of the paper mache glue and again, just give it another damp. 
Because in that way, as I tell you, it helps you to eliminate the extra air and it helps you to make your piece uh, can be stronger. So use your fingernails, use your other tools, just whatever you can use. Press, move around, do whatever else you have to do. Look, use your two hands, press it. And when you think that's how you may want it, that's when you're going to leave it alone. Okay, okay, this one. So it looks more nicely to me how I, this is, this is uh, the pre-final thing. We're going to add one more code when everything comes together so we can figure out what is the three-dimensional part we want to add it or something, right? But this is just going to be our skeleton. So the same thing you do on these little skinny arms, this little section here, if you want to cover up, and this thing here too, you're going to twist a small one, wrap it around, and then use a single piece one just to cover it up. It's the same repetitions always over and over. So this is the one, as I said, if you want to leave it like that, I don't want to move it, I want to look it like that, I just leave it like that in the corner uh, because uh, as I was taking this apart and it broke, the legs, the legs of this one, you know, like, if you, yeah, you can see it there. The leg, this leg here, I will do the same thing. So just quickly example here. The next week we are fixing this one. Don't go away next week. The third week, maybe it's not too much excited anymore, but um, so according to this one, they were sitting like this, look, relaxing, right? Uh, this is the knees, uh, and this is the legs with the feet, right? They're like a little creature. So this guy uh, is gonna be attached here next week when it's more solid, so I can have more control too. Uh, and when it's attached, this one, uh, same thing I was telling you, with this piece of paper, you twist it, same idea over and over, and the legs now, as I say, you go around and wrap it around. and just put more, make it thicker, remember? We talk about that. So if you wanna have it like a thick leg, depends the thick of your pinky, the thing of your thumb, that's a piece of paper you're going to get, right? And squeeze it and turn it and then wrap it around and then cover it up with the other things. So um, it's a lot of repetition on that and that's how I said when I was showing you this one, um, I did almost the same thing on the top of here to cover up all the connections. Next week we go with the hands a different way. And whatever fit you wanna add to your pieces too or whatever is gonna be the base. But I'm going to show you how to make things like this three-dimensional. We did a lot of flat now and putting things together. But next week is gonna be like this. It's very similar too, but um, it's how we cross things on between of the toes to create that looking and also to, when you press it and compress it, so it doesn't pop like that with the air. So it's a little bit tricky things, but now it's very similar again. It's gonna be very, very similar because the layer, the layering, I show you with the other thing for the piñata, the first step, it was this layer layer in here. So you're going to use all these techniques and different things for different things you want attached to cover up. Because if I don't put this paper, as I said before, this will be like sharp. I will be cutting myself all the time. 
So the first one was a little bit difficult, you know, because I gotta be careful. The second one, yeah, the third one, I, okay, I can, I can smooth it and more. I put like 10 layers here, so it's thick, and I don't cut myself, I don't cut nobody. So it's the same thing, and as I said before, when you wanna do something hollow or extensions for something that you try to work or whatever, uh, you squish one end, put it together, uh, then you get again, again, sorry, same deal, the paper, and it's flat, uh, very similar to the molding. Here, you're going to start with the, uh, what is the gap or the union, the bad union, that is where it goes, the, the, small, the small piece. Yeah, and then just go around, bend it, go around, smooth it. Then you get another piece of paper. Sometimes, look, I just got it like this, look, right? And then I smooth it out. Then I have to wet my paper because if it's not, it's not going to get that consistent of hardening. The, the paper has to be damp, remember? So you see there where I put the glue, the reason I put the glue there is because I'm going to put this part here again. And it's going to cover up. I'm going to smooth it out, take all the whatever bad things it looks, or I look, I put it however I want. And then keep going. Cover up, cover up, cover up. And then you can press here a little bit, look, as I did, to make it even or something. All depends what you try to make. This was just to explain you how you can put two things together. It comes apart, right? That was the idea before, but it will not come apart if we do it like that because the paper will be attached to the other side of here. So that's something you have to make sure again, take it apart for you. You could do it like this, like, oh look, this one side is smaller than the other one. Sometimes you will find that situation automatically this thing went there by themselves. I don't even have to do this random thing I made here before. When you have that one, what you do? Just put it right there in the middle and go around. And smooth it out. Your first layer always will look a little bit crazy because it's just the starting. And then you keep going. And then you can put more and make it taller, make it hollow for something that you need. Um, also, when it's firm already, you can cut little holes and do something else. We can go uh, down the next week because our time is almost over. Then Gina has to have another, um, it's another show in the rotunda. So this is just because I want to use this one quickly to show you to you. I don't try to use the ink, as I said. But just, just to show you the idea of what I try to do. Because possible, I'm not going to use that one for anything else, me. I just want to show it to you. So remember, you always have to make this nice and damp. When it's flat, you don't have to really squish it like I did. You cool if you want. It's not really needed. My paper is pretty damp, pretty nice. Look, even it breaks. We talk about that. When it breaks, it's because it's damp enough. All right, this is my piece, right? We were talking about this one. So you see how he got a little bit messed up. So now I'm going to start some way. And I'm just going to put it on there. And turn it slowly. Let, let gravity work for you, look. And just smooth it out, cover it up, put it inside. And then you go the other side, go down, 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 maybe go in the center again, and this thing will be firm. And then after this, you can get your pencil and draw a couple things, maybe holes, and may try to make like a funny building or something that has little doors and open like the other thing I was doing because now it's more stronger too. So if you look at like this, and you can cut it on the center with a exact knife. Draw it first and cut it, you can open little doors 
and you can do a painting inside, or you can do another three-dimensional thing inside when we're talking about next week with more paper mache. So these are different exercises, different things that you can use to start thinking what you want to make. And next week, if you create something, uh, we can have a little one-on-one -on -one talk a little bit too. Uh, you can ask me questions. You can send me pictures or a small video. And I can look at it and be, be prepared for you next week and tell you, oh, this is what I think, or this is what I should do, or this is maybe you want to consider about my experience, right? But it's up to you. But yeah, so this is one example, how to unite things together, make a ticker. Um, this was for the piñata or for molding. The same technique, flat as used on the tube, do it on this. As I said, you have a fake mask or maniki, put grease and put a small amount of small papers all around and then the mask will come almost looking like the face you made. And like this one, I said, I tell you, if I let it dry more, look, it's already coming together. We put more layers so it's not all like wowingly. So I always said to my students when working on the schools, four to five layers minimum so you don't break it right away and you are like, eh, what is this? But yeah, like it's the same idea as if I tell you now very quickly. This is just one layer, right? It breaks. So if you put two, this is two, this is going to be Two, four, yeah, two, four layers now. Still it breaks, but it takes more, you know, it took more. So five layers, eight layers, all depends what you wanna do. Look. But with the glue, it gets a little bit harder later. It's not that easy to break, but at least five layers to have it very well. So I don't know if you have any more questions. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask now or you can send me an email quickly and I will try to respond. You have to unmute yourselves. I cannot touch my computer now. <laughs> Just wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You'll see you next week, right? Yep. See you next week. Yep. See you All next right. week. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You want uh, more, I gotta go, go and wash my hands. That's what I tell you, you put petroleum jelly. Now just use hot water and soap. And it takes like a minute or so, but it goes away. And then just put some Vaseline, sorry, lotion or something, because sometimes the water, it dries with the glue, but that's all. It's non-toxic, no nothing. Same thing, you pour, you use. If you don't want to use all the glue like I did and mess up, just put water, let it dissolve and just, Put it on the drain, it's flour and water. It will not clog you anything. Just take out the papers, right? All the big chunks. And it can go into like that. Don't put it on the trash because it will ferment and you get flies. And if you want to save it, put it on the container, put it on the refrigerator, and it lasts at least three to four days because it starts fermenting too. It starts become to be like a sourdough glue now. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.